Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Firestar Plays Pokemon Heart Gold Nuzlocke. Now I should be able to face off against um, the gym leader Morty today, hopefully. I got a couple more levels on each of these guys. I want to get them up before I uh, face them. Because after the whole um, Whitney thing, yeah, I don't want to take a big of a chance as I did with that. She, uh, she slaughtered me pretty bad. Yeah. Anyway, hoping for all that to change. <laughs> Things should go better now, hopefully. Hopefully you're not um, getting poor audio quality like I was um, the other day when I streamed uh, Dead by Daylight with my uh, family. So yeah, as uh, part of my little side projects with uh, Pokemon, though, I am currently um, doing a canon run through. Thank you for the follow, Nox. Um, I am currently doing a uh, canon run through of each Pokemon region in order with what team I would canonly use for the region. Uh, so far I've done uh, Kanto and Johto. I'm currently working on Hoenn, but uh, while I'm doing these I'm also doing um, kind of like a little race against Ash and going back and rewatching the anime and seeing if I'm able to play side by side with the anime and actually reach the Elite Four before uh, Ash does and actually win. Which I have almost um, no worries about Gen 3 since it goes on forever from what I can remember of it. It's got like four seasons in it. I don't, I don't, I don't, remember, I don't remember if that includes the Battle Frontier or not. But I think the Battle Frontier is at least a season or two by itself. And then also I am working on doing um, Bird Keeper Toby's um, Master Dex Challenge, which has kind of become more of the uh, Pokemon... It's not the bank anymore. What is it called? I don't know. Whatever they decided to call the new storage system. Which... Slips my mind at the moment. Pokemon Home, that's it. Pokemon Home. Which disappointed me a little bit. Mm. 
Yeah, um, one of my friends is actually doing a... Um, he's writing a, his own story. Uh, his Like, you know, his own little... Uh, fan story based on his journeys through the Pokemon region and he's based it more off of the um, the anime than he did the video games. I personally base it more off the games than I would the anime. Kind of like how I've done with um, my uh, Pokemon tabletop campaign I've been writing where it takes place a few years after the the main games. So you actually get to see like what kind of effect Team Rocket had on the Kanto region and Johto regions. Yeah, I'm almost done with Gen 3. I got seven of the eight badges. Same as Ash. Ash had, Ash had a little time to catch up to me because I spent so much time trying to um, hunt for a Feebats. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that took forever to do, was trying to catch one of those Feebats. Now the problem is getting it to um, evolve through a uh, maxed out beauty because the game's battery is dead <laughs> ran dry and will no longer um, support the growth of berries so I can't replant the berries to try and get more back so I can you know further increase the beauty of my feedback so it will evolve into my Lodic. Oh yeah, um, I'm actually writing a, um, a book at the moment too. Well, I've been working on it for years, but, um, I actually wrote a D&D &D campaign that takes place as kind of like the prologue to that story. Oh yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a side project since like middle school. <laughs> And it's like, every time I sit down to actually work on it, I get to looking at it, I'm like, this part could be better. I don't really like this part. I should change this part. And then I don't get any further. I just rewrote what I've already had written. But I really want to get better at it because I have a lot of side projects I want to work on, but none of them are getting done because I keep doing that sort of thing with them. That plus work keeps me out like 95% of my day. Go to sleep for work. Get ready for work. Go to work. Work. Go home from work. Then I get like a couple hours to myself to try and relax. And then by the time I realize my day is pretty much gone, I have to start getting ready for bed so I can go to bed for work the next day. Oh boy, here's Beverly. Let's see, let's see what she has to say. Were you awake? I was just calling at like 9 at night to check on you. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, you could have been calling at like 11 or something. Um, well... When I write, kind of what I do is I'm like, okay, here's some backstory, here's some history, here's some lore, here's some characters, here's their backstory, their personalities, and then I kind of just drop them in there. I have a point A and a point Z, and then I just let them get there on their own. <laughs> and kind of tell me how they do things and how things work. <laughs> Uh, 
That's pretty much been my uh, writing style forever. Oh, I wrote like an entire history. I, I drew a map of the entire island that the novel takes place on. I um, came up with backstories. I wrote laws and everything. I wrote um, I wrote an entire religion for these guys. And I sit down and I'm like, yeah, I think I need to rewrite this, change this. And it's like, you've only gotten like Four, five, or no, you got like ten chapters in. I know, but it, this, this part's just not sitting right. <laughs> or I, it feels like I could word it, but I know I can do better than this. But yeah, I've, uh, I've kind of done that too. Like, I went up to a, one of my uh, science teachers in middle school because I was doing a another writing side project, not my main writing project, but my but another one I was working on about a kid who believes his family is cursed to bring about the end of the world. And I was going to talk about this nuclear reactor exploding or whatever, and I was asking. Him, Exactly. How far away do you need to be from a small nuclear reactor explosion to be perfectly fine? And he's looking at me like, why do you want to know this exactly? N no reason. I just, <laughs> I'm writing a book and I want to know so it's accurate. <laughs> Not me wanting to know so I can safely blow up a nuclear reactor if that's what you're worried about. In that same story, I wanted to include something about um, radiation mutating a giant spider. And there were going to be zombies and everything. And I found out Resident Evil already did that. I was like, dang, I'm going to have to change this now a little. <laughs> so Resident Evil doesn't think I'm ripping them off. At least I think Resident Evil has a giant spider in one of their games. I'm not too knowledgeable, well, wasn't too knowledgeable until the remakes of 2 and 3 came out. But I wasn't too knowledgeable on anything that happened before Resident Evil 5. Minus the movies, which I know are very non-canon. <laughs> Unless they're like a simulation inside of the Resident Evil video games. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I tried the written language. I'm not going to bother with a spoken language. Like, I'm like, yeah, they, they speak English. It's written different, though. And they call it something else. It just so happens to correlate to what we refer to as English.
Yeah, like one of my main characters for that for my main story, I've um, I have him coming back. Uh, he's he's being essentially pulled in from a world more similar to ours into their world. And essentially I'm going to explain away the fact that their language is slightly different and he can read their, um, ooh, a potion, read their language because magic mumbo jumbo allowed his brain to descramble other languages. Because, um, lazy exposition. I was like, yep, here's a magic source that inputs a lot of knowledge into his brain so he knows things he wouldn't normally know when he needs it. Not like Superman's whole, oh, I got a power as soon as I need it type thing, but this is more like deja vu thing where it's like, oh yeah, I kind of know something about that. Or, you know, it's an, an instinctive thing to help them. It's not really a... Um, it covers all their basis exactly when they need it and is perfect for the situation. It's just, it helps. It doesn't fix the situation, it just helps. Yeah, I was also working on it, and I was also, like, sitting there looking at the language I was, like, the alphabet I was writing for this new language, and I was like, huh. Now, if I spend all this time handwriting this language, how do I get it into my physical copy of the book? How do we get that to work on Word document? Sorry, family barging in in the middle of a stream. Well, they're not supposed to be. Let me go heal uh, Grant Nick before he faints from poisoning. Yeah, that one's um, that one's a classic. That's like maybe half of superheroes and some villains for a second I read that MC as MCU and I was like what does the Marvel Cinematic Universe have to do with any of this are you writing a fanfic about it and I was like oh no wait that's just MC main character okay Yeah, that would that, that would work though, but only if your language is a direct letter to letter change though. And Cuz like if you come up with a new letter, a 26 letter keyboard doesn't exactly um equivalent to that. But again, this was like back in 
middle school, which was like too many years ago. And I'm not sure if we had the new fancy, I can input my own language into this yet. But yeah, you are right. I mean, I could use like symbols and numbers and whatever else. Oh, another phone call. They're calling me this late to tell me how cute your Venonat is. Thank you. That is that is vital information I need to know. I could have been sleeping. All right, you take care. I need to get a cushion for this seat. <laughs> Glad I got the uh, the actual cartridge for this, so I can evolve Graveler and Haunter later on when I need to. Instead of just being stuck with the mid tier evolutions. Though I did that once for um, fire for a fire red Nuzlocke. Not the one I streamed, but or not streamed, but you know recorded for my YouTube channel. But I didn't have another cartridge, or I didn't have a link cable or something. I think it was the link cable was the problem. So I couldn't trade it to evolve it. So I went through all the Elite Four and everything, which is a haunter.
Yay, granite leveled up. Oz uh, still has not found me anything new. So glad all those are physical attacks in this one. That was like this thing's best attribute. Yeah, great. More poisoning. I gotta run back and get that fixed. Yeah, I should be able to make it in about 56 steps, 52 steps. Oh wait, that's what I forgot. I forgot to post the I am streaming live now onto my YouTube channel. <laughs> oh well, uh, that's my fault. My bad. Ooh, super potion. Not really using Oz, but he's still uh, earning his keep here. I just want to get all these guys up to like level 28 before I go and fight uh, Morty. Maybe 29. But I'll see about where I'm at in about 15 minutes, and then I'll probably uh, go ahead and take on Morty. I'm 
trying to decide though if I want to um, when I do the generation 3 Nuzlocke if I want to go with the old school cartridges or if I want to go with the newer Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire versions Cause I went with the remakes on this one because I didn't really. I'm not really able to um, stream the older games from this this one. Plus, they're a little, well, very outdated comparatively to these ones. And these other two, there just wasn't as much to them I guess or maybe it, I don't know maybe I decided that it was the part of the problem was the the difficulty curve for it was a little off and circumstances like you could have a, a Charizard pretty much one shot anything because critical hit was based off of speed then With Charizard speed, it was like everything was a critical hit, flamethrower, fire blast, slash. He had a good range of attacks too, he tore through everything. He's not necessarily as, as impressive now as he was then, but I still like Charizard pretty well. One of my favorite starters used to be my favorite now the little um firefox finnegan and its evolutions have kind of taken that spot away from charmander and its evolutions yeah. you know it did get its dragon title which it really th which i really thought it deserved in the first place upon reaching its final evolution kind of how i was like how is gyarados not a dragon i mean it's at least a leviathan come on Which is essentially like a sea dragon, but I guess not all leviathans are dragons. Well, sea dragons are leviathans. I guess. Oh, phone call from Jack. Good evening, Kitsu. Are you awake? First person to actually ask, but I mean, if I answer the phone, obviously I'm awake. Or at least you woke me up. Thank you for the fact that magnitude gets stronger if your opponent's under the ground. Not sure how much my team would actually be useful against Morty, though. I mean, um... well, that's all right. Welcome back, Nox. Yeah, it's just saying. I'm not sure how much my team would actually be uh, useful, though, against Morty. I mean, Feraligatr has, or not Feraligatr, but um, Super Gator has his uh, his bite attack. Um. Sand Slash or Mim doesn't really have anything but um, normal type moves minus its uh, rollout attack, which is probably just okay against them. Uh, again, Granite just has his, but he's very fragile to special attacks. Hunter would, or um, what did I name my? Ghastly again. Was it Spirit or what? I think I named it like Wraith, but 
and <laughs> Weep Bell's Grass and Poison type attacks and normal type attacks won't do hardly anything against the ghosts. Yeah, back to what I was uh, talking about earlier, though. Um, when I was doing my uh, canon team playthroughs, oh yeah, I mean, not as tough as uh, psychic types were. Psychic types were uh, nigh unbeatable in like the first two generations. But yeah, um, in my canonical playthrough for Generation 3, I ran into... Um, two shiny Pokemon on Ruby. Uh, the first one was a um, Numel, which I was half tempted to use because I kind of like it. And then the other one was, but didn't fit what team I had planned for my cannon, for my cannon team. And then the other one was a shiny Duskull. Which I wasn't as tempted to use because I don't think it really gets great until it's a Dusk Nor. But yeah, I was hoping for uh, use against Morty. I was going to use that Eevee I had. I was going to evolve it into uh, Espeon or Umbreon and use it to fight Morty's ghosts. But unfortunately, uh, a critical hit, one shot killed it pretty much and ruined that hope. And it was one of my, and those are like my, my two favorite evolutions for Eevee. And I've really come to like Sylveon too. I know. Eevee is one of my favorites. But surprisingly, even though Eevee's one of my favorites, I do not have a Poke Sona version of one of my Sonas for an Eevee. I think at one point I did. Oh, I have a Shiny Sylveon, though. And, um... I, I caught it when I was playing uh, X or Y. I think it was Y I was playing. Uh... I just ran into a wild shiny Eevee and I caught it. I was like, well, I guess since there's only... Because normally I hold on to all the shiny Eevees I have. I almost have a shiny Eevee for every Eeveelution. And then I was going to decide what to evolve them all into. Once I had enough for all of them. But I caught it there and I was like, eh, since there's only one actual Eeveelution in this game that originated from this game. I guess I'll evolve it into that. Which fit because it was a male Eevee. So the male Sylvian was uh, blue in coloration, which I thought was funny and kind of cute. I think I about have a, enough shiny Eevees for all of the Eeveelutions. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to um, go back and check with check on that one. I've been working on the, uh, I've been spending a lot of time on the, the cannon playthrough slash the, um, Bird Keeper Toby's Pokemon Bank slash Pokemon Home Challenge. Which, I mean, I have most of every Pokemon, but in the end, what I ended up doing was, um... I got most of the Pokemon, but they don't come from the proper regions for the most part. So I'm just going back to try to fix that.
Jeez, how long ago was that? X and Y? Feels like forever ago, but I don't think it was all that long ago. <laughs> Because I went to the midnight re pre-release for that one, I got like the little poster that reads what time or what year the different Pokemon games came out on it. So it's a nice little timeline. Yeah, see that that feels like it was such a long time ago, but I know it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was like way back in college, jeez. Yeah. In, in retrospect, seven years is not all that long, but it feels like such a long time ago. I mean, I've been playing it since it came out, so, I mean, I've been playing it for a long time altogether. Yeah, maybe it was. But, I mean, seven years could. It is quite a bit of time for me, really. As an individual, I mean, it's very, per, time is relevant, or relative. But I tend to think of uh, time in terms of um, the world or, you know, existence rather than, you know, just from my own perspective. You know, like seven years is like a fourth of my life, like a quarter of my life or something like that. I don't know. Accidentally immortal. Yeah, that's what my, uh, my, uh, my main Sona, the and the main character from, um, one from my main book is like he was born like just being a straight up fox but circumstances like partially fused his genetic code with a phoenix And in doing so, it gave him um, matching abilities to the Phoenix, such as psychic abilities, pyrokinesis, teleportation, and um, partial immortality. Like, it, it gives him regenerative properties. It's not like he can't just, like, outright die. 
Not that he's died yet. <laughs> Alright, that's, uh, that's the uh, three-quarters mark, so I'm going to go ahead and come over here and face Morty. Go, Mim. Use the only attack you know that can hurt ghosts. Yeah, see, I, he's he's friends with a character who is similar to that. Because in uh, in the story I'm writing, um, there are people in the world who are like, magic is very commonplace, and most magic though is based off of um, the elements. Yeah, forget defense curl for fury cutter, just in case we need it. And so elemental magic is the most common form of magic. And it essentially holds the whole, you know, all of reality together. And it needs to be kept in balance so no one force in nature is stronger than another. And the gods were like, yeah, we're not, we're not going to be that invested in what we created. We kind of made it. It exists, but we feel like we need to take a step back here. But just to make sure things don't completely unravel, re things don't completely unravel with reality. Here are these pillars that are going to reincarnate. Uh, and they're going to be essentially the magical source of all elemental magic for that element. And then when they die, they'll get reincarnated. Or not necessarily reincarnated, but those powers will move on to someone else. So there's like the one who can control fire, the one who can control shadow. Yeah, see, I, I kind of did something like that with mine where um, the first time uh, my main character uh, runs into the one who can control shadow, he instantly mistakes him for the great evil overlord or whatever because he has shadow powers. And we're like, oh, well, I guess because you have shadow powers, that makes you evil. Ah, oh, jeez. I'll go ahead with a hyper potion. I don't. I really don't want to lose men. That sounds a, a, a bit like um, My Hero Academia, though.
Yeah, darkness can be used for good. It's just man's preconceived notion that darkness is evil, or that things that lurk in it are. Ah, sucker punched you. Didn't see that one coming, did you? This is the tricky one, though. Yeah, I, I, I don't go over heavy on edgy characters. Some of them come from quite the dark backstories and... My family keeps busting in when I'm trying to record or stream here. Like a lot of them, I'll give them like dark backstories, or I don't make a lot of edgy characters. I have made edgy characters before, but I don't do them a lot. Oh, nope, it was over two. I overshot it. I miscalculated. That was the last one, too. And I'll just have a uh, super gator out front here. I feel like he's really my uh, best shot at this. Like, like I think the close, like some of my most edgy characters though have been in a. Um, Dragon Ball roleplay game online, and they were Saiyans. And normally it mostly came in the form of my low class Saiyans, where they're like, they were born to elite parents, and when their elite parents saw that, they're like, eh, I just better chuck this child off the edge of a cliff. But through some miraculous, um, Tail they managed to uh, survive. <laughs> and then come back with like a murder wish for their father who tossed them off a cliff. Other than that, they're like super into the whole. The. Uh, the whole uh, class system. Oh, jeez. Haha, <laughs> you can't hurt Oz. Oh no, no, Oz can't escape. No worry, the great and powerful Oz will blind you. 
repeatedly. Pocket sand. Ha cha cha cha. The name is Shackleford. Rusty Shackleford. Can't sucker punch me if I don't attack you. Ha, ah, woke up. More sand in your face. Uh, your accuracy won't drop anymore. Well, the problem is, is I can't switch out and I can't damage you either. Well, for some reason, Tail Whip works. Yeah, sure, just blow all your attacks into this monkey. Yeah, that's good to always think about what the, the character wants out of life, not just what does he want out of the goal. Always gives them so much more depth. Should lock that door. <laughs> I think I've hit about as many times as I can tail whip, yeah. I don't think I'm able to switch. Well, switching is probably more than likely a terrible idea. Let me uh, spend some time healing here. Yeah, I really should have thought this through. This was not a good idea. 
Should I at least give an Oz a way to fight back? Some kind of dark type attack or something. Now I need the announcer from Spongebob, three years later, and just do a time skip with this. Fortunately that does not work in real life. Oh look at that, it's out of attacks. Well, there goes Oz. Guess I'll go ahead and risk Wraith with this now. Yeah, but I mean, I had to. It was for the greater good. I wanted like some time to heal and stuff. I just didn't think it'd work that well and get me stuck with them like that. That was my biggest worry was that uh that Gengar. Ah. <laughs> Beat you Morty. Go home to your Rick. And your own timeline. I think this is where the uh, this is the timeline that the Rick came from who made Pocket Mortys. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> I can see that. Anyway, thank you everyone for tuning in. I will see you uh, next time on the next Phoenix Firestar plays Pokemon Heart Gold Nuzlocke.